Hello all. In today's video, we'll see what is frequency distribution and what is meant by grouped frequency distribution and continuous frequency distribution. Notes for the video have been provided in the download link. Suppose you are given a data regarding marks obtained by 100 students in a particular subject. If you look at this data, this data is very confusing. But now, if we arrange the data in this manner, it is much better than the previous representation. Here you can see that 25 marks have been obtained by two students, 26 marks have been obtained by one student and so on. This is much easier to understand. And how did we obtain this table? We use something called as a tally mark. A tally mark is a bar. And we use another mark which is called as a cross tally which is a cross bar. So suppose if 25 marks have been obtained by one student, so we'll represent it by one single tally mark. If it hasn't been obtained by two students, we'll represent it by two tally marks. Similarly, if it has been obtained by four students, we represent it by showing four tally marks. In case if 25 marks have been obtained by five students, then we draw four tally marks and we draw a cross tally. So this entire thing represents five tally marks. Okay. I hope the concept is clear. So now 25 marks have been obtained by two students. So we'll put two tally marks and write two in the frequency because it has been obtained by two students. This method of representation of data is called as frequency distribution. These marks are called as the variable x and the number of students is called as the frequency because it shows how frequently the variable occurs. We can say that this representation though it is better than the previous one is still quite large. We can further condense it by making class intervals and number of observations in each class. So this 25 to 29 will form one class interval. Similarly 30 to 34 will form another class interval and so on. So here we can see that 25 to 29 will be one class interval which will contain, which will contain students with marks 25 and up to students with marks 29. Similarly the interval 30 to 34 will include students having marks 30 up to 34. That means they have obtained 30 marks also 31, 32, 33 and 34 also. So it includes both the lower limit and the upper limit. And this type of table is called as a frequency table. And the manner in which the class frequencies are distributed over the class intervals is called as group frequency distribution of the variable. And as I told you before, since these class intervals includes the upper limit and the lower limit, they are called as inclusive classes. And the classification is termed as inclusive type classification. But if you observe carefully, you will notice that if there is a continuous variable or suppose if a student has got 29.5 marks. Okay, so you will realize that he can neither be selected in this interval which is from 25 to 29 nor he can he be represented in this class interval 34. So we will use a different type of class interval. So here we'll use the class interval from 25 to 30. So what does this basically mean is that this class interval will include students who have obtained marks from 25 up to 30 but excluding 30. Okay, I'll repeat it once again. It will include students who have obtained marks from 25 up to 30 but excluding 30. Similarly, this class interval which is from 30 to 35 will include students who have got marks from 30 to 35 but excluding 35 okay and this type of frequency distribution is called as continuous frequency distribution of the variable as i told you before since we are excluding the upper limits these type of classes are called as exclusive classes and the classification is termed as exclusive type classification That's all for today. 
in the next lecture we'll see graphical representation of a frequency distribution thank you